Okay, with the Learning and Development Working Group is gonna start us off with Elena. Thank you so much, Susan, and welcome everyone again. I am gonna take a big book and tell you a story for today's session. So it's the big book on learning and development tales. So I am gonna read the story to you all, and hopefully this will inspire you to join our session. Once upon a time, there was only, there were only face-to-face -face training packages for child protection in humanitarian actions practitioner. Every day, some colleague working with local, national, international organization would be looking for learning resources for their team. One day, COVID-19 outbreak happened, and because of that, learning and development approaches changed overnight across the globe. Because of that learning, because of that, the learning and development working group also tried to get up to speed until finally we can say we have a forward looking new vision to learning and development efforts for the sector with many new tools. Join us to hear more about this. And I will leave the floor for another tale from Silvia. Thank you, Elena, and welcome everyone. I'm going to take my big book now, and then I'm going to read about the child labor and humanitarian action tale. Once upon a time, there were practitioners working across multiple countries and in different crises, aiming at preventing and responding to child labor, especially to the worst forms of it. Every day, they would work on projects after interventions, after activities. Given the immediate danger and long-term consequences of child labor, these practitioners knew that tackling child labor was an urgent, very urgent priority. It was hard. You could not even imagine how hard was this. Thankfully, they had a lot of people supporting our superheroes. They could count on community members, partners, development colleagues, and also other humanitarian sector colleagues to join them to fight against this big monster of child labor. One day, individuals and agencies coordinated themselves and decided to develop and test guidance and tools and share best practices. Using what they learned across context and over the years, they started the very needed evidence based for child labor programming in humanitarian settings. And they, what they did is they launched a very practical toolkit and resources, a shiny new powerful tool to fight back the monster of child labor. But what happened? One day a global pandemic happened and children in crisis became even more at risk of child labor. It was a time of despair, but the group of practitioners rapidly organized themselves and started to document, to share practices and help each other again, together again and again. And today and in the years to come, practitioners are still working to prevent and respond to child labor in humanitarian action, to continue to use and promote their very useful resources. But unfortunately, this battle is still open. But we know that here and everywhere, we could count on new heroes, new practitioners that want to join the cause. If you are one of them, if you feel that you want to tackle child labor with us, later today, there is an opportunity to hear more about the Child Labor Task Force, its current and upcoming resources, and the use by practitioners. So come and join us, be part of the change, and child labor with us. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Elena. Fantastic stories. All right, now we're going to turn it over to the Advocacy Working Group and the CAFA Children Associated with Armed Forces Armed Group Task Force, who have a video to present to you to convince you as well. So over to the video.
Hi everyone, my name is Sandra. I'm the co-lead of the CAFAG Task Force. Today for the marketplace, we would like to invite you to the Audrey's show. Audrey and her famous cats, RV and Frenchie will interview the CAFAG Task Force co-leads. That's me and Bridget and the advocacy working group co-leads, Faith and Amanda. We will talk about the great things we have done last year, the achievements we're proud of, we will discuss our plans for next year, what is in the pipeline, and we're also going to talk about the linkages between the CAFAC Task Force and the Advocacy Working Group. How can we do more and better advocacy about CAFAC related issues? So if you want to know more about what we have done, what we will do, and if you want to share your ideas about advocacy for CAFAG, come and join us for Audrey's show. <laughs> Okay, that was fantastic. So you've got fairy tales from the child labor and learning and development group and that will be continued and that will be in room one when you leave this and go to your the, the sex the session or you can have the Audrey show with the advocacy working group and the cafe task force so it's an impossible choice that you will have to make. Uh, and I'm sure they will both be fascinating. Sorry, and the Audrey show will be in room two um, when you go to the next session. So you're going to leave this session and then you're gonna to choose to go to room one, child labor, learning and development, or room two, advocacy working group, or cafe task force, and cafe task force. So enjoy your sessions um, and we'll see you soon.